Going into the data, it's interesting because 3 and Y, the volume products, beat estimates. The other bucket, which is X, S and Cybertruck, missed estimates. What else do we know? Yeah, I, I think this is a case of, you know, uh, a, a narrow beat giveth and a narrow miss taketh away. This is a company that, you know, its, its shares are known to be quite volatile. Uh, just a quarter ago, they just barely exceeded expectations and the stock went kind of crazy. I don't think we necessarily learn a ton from these numbers. I think, you know, we, we do generally see uh, a, a, a nice upward trend both sequentially and year over year. Uh, having said that, if you kind of, you know, pan out a little bit and, and look at the trend, uh, you know, going a little further back, we, we really just see a sort of general kind of flattening and, and lack of growth from this company. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, year, on a year to date basis, we may actually see a decline if, if uh, trends hold up. We've, we've seen them uh, drop a, a little over 2% for the year. So uh, this is a company that, you know, is priced as a growth stock that, that is having trouble growing. And particularly in China, Craig. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of the expectations going into these numbers was that this company was going to get a big boost from uh, China increasing subsidies for uh, people to trade in older cars uh, and get an electric vehicle. We did see uh, Tesla's uh, wholesale numbers tick up as a result of, of that uh, boosted incentive. Uh, but, you know, th those numbers also are, are wholesales. That means, you know, they're, they're kind of closer to shipments as opposed to actual, you know, vehicle deliveries. And so, you know, we may actually see some of that, you know, a support uh, coming into play in the fourth quarter of this year. As always, you go straight to social media. I posted the numbers there and there's this big body of people that say the sell side doesn't know what it's talking about. This isn't about delivering EVs. It's about a future where Tesla own and operates a proprietary ride hailing app, Craig. They run and operate robo taxis. And I think next week, we will find out whether or not that's true. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the counter to that argument would, of course, just be that this is also a company that's talked about, you know, putting self-driving cars on the road and offering a, you know, a, a service that would be sort of Uber-like where you could hail one of their self-driving cars for, for years now. I mean, it's, it's been a half decade at least since uh, Elon Musk was openly musing about this. So, you know, whether or not they're actually able to deliver that is another question. I do think that, you know, if they're able to execute and, and sort of do what others haven't, uh, you know, pulled off, which is really do this at scale, uh, of course, uh, that, that would be a massive for, for this company. But uh, it's already a pretty massive valuation for, uh, for, you know, a manufacturer that is really struggling uh, to increase sales.